Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity. In this lesson, we're going to be reviewing everything that we covered so far, and then you'll be getting an overview of what we'll be covering in the future. So this is just a section break, a place where you can just sit back, put your feet up and rest, and process everything that we've accomplished so far. But before we do that, let's look at the last task we worked on. Here I have the C-sharp for beginners project already open, and I'm gonna open up the Hello World script. The task before was to create an array of scores and ultimately calculate the average based on that array. Here I have some old code I was working on, and this stuff may seem a little bit strange and a little bit crazy, but actually this isn't even my code, but at in time, you'll learn what all these things do. All right, here's our last Hello World script, and what I'm going to do is remove these. I'm now going to create an array, and this is going to be a public array of ints. So we type public, and then we type int, and then we give it a name, and we'll call this scores. In this case, I always, get conf I always forget whether to put the brackets before or after. So here we go. So here we have an array of scores already set up. And in the last video, I mentioned that since we're making this public, Unity is going to manage this array for us. Next, what we'll do is on disable, we'll calculate the average. Okay, here we have the code already set, and I'll cover this in just a moment. But as I was typing it, hopefully some of you may have noticed some problems with this. And I'm not talking problems of a syntax nature, meaning I didn't make any typos, but rather problems from a conceptual level, an overview. Can you see what's wrong about this code? Not that it's wrong, but can you see why this code will actually make you more work? Just think about that for a second. And let's go back to Unity. Here I'm going to switch open to my Scene tab and select my game object. And now I can see we have scores. We have three fields. I want this to be five. And we'll just put random numbers between one through ten. And there's our scores. Now I'm going to start. And then I'll switch open to the console and now disable this cube. What happened here is that our code didn't run. And this is a, a typical error that you will encounter when working with Unity. I'm going to switch back to model develop. I'm going to save it and then build it. Now we'll run again. We'll select our cube, and we'll disable it. The reason why it didn't run before was because I simply forgot to save it. If you don't save it, Unity won't know about the changes, and thus your changes won't be picked up. Here we'll come back here, and you can see the average is 6. Okay, let's return back to the code. Why did I mention that this isn't something you'd want to do? Well, if you remember, actually, I'll open this a little further and we'll squeeze this to the side here. Here you can see this is our arrays over here in the Unity editor. And we have set five, five elements in that array. But yet, if you look in this editor here, we do have five elements. And remember, we start counting with zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. But what happens if I decided to add, say, let's move this to four. Now I'm going to run and we'll disable and we get an index out of range error. Index out of range error means we are now calling an index. In this case, we're calling score four on an array that is smaller, meaning the index that you're calling just, it doesn't exist. It can't be found. This will, 
this will ultimately cause problems and crash your program. So this is what I would call a very brittle program. Why is it brittle? Because we've hard-coded, and hard-code means we added the numbers here, each array index that we want to index. We're taking no account of the actual array size in this average. So this makes it brittle. Every time we make a change in the editor, we're now, we will now have to make the change in the code. What we need to do is ultimately learn how to find out the size of the arrays and then get them in another way. And we would have to iterate through that array. And in this next section, I'll be covering how you can do that. Before we talk about the next section, let's talk about exactly what we learned so far. The first thing we covered was basically getting up and running with Unity. You saw how we could create C-sharp scripts, how to attach them to game objects, and ultimately how you could call code by simply disabling a game object in the scene. Later in this series, you're going to learn about more elegant ways of doing that. But that was a method I wanted to introduce to you early so that you can manually trigger the code without having to type in a lot of extraneous code as well. Next, you learned about variables. And variables are where we store information. You can store data throughout the lifetime of the program, or you can store it for much shorter times. But you learned that how you can keep data in certain variables and then access those variables to manipulate them. Next, you learned about types. And types determine what kind of data that variable contains. And types, as you saw, was pretty extensive. There are many types for numbers, and types range from being signed to unsigned, meaning an unsigned integer contains no negative values, whereas a signed integer has positive and negative values. You also learned about doubles and floats and the ideas of 32-bit numbers and 64-bit numbers. There's a whole lot to cover in types, and if you feel a little bit sketchy about that, I highly suggest you watch that video again. Next, we dove into operators. You saw how that you can add, subtract, multiply numbers, and how certain operators can be used differently depending in the context that they're being used. Meaning, if we have two strings and then we have a plus sign, we're basically taking these two strings and putting them together to create another string, where what we say concacting them. Whereas if you take two numbers and you add them together, you're going to create a new number with those both values combined. Throughout this series, you're going to be introduced to more and more operators. And then finally, after you learned operators, we dug into arrays. And arrays are where you want to contain a range of values. Arrays at the moment are somewhat limited, but in the next section, you're going to be learning how to manipulate them through control flow. So here's what we'll be covering in the next section. And I've come up with a very rough list right now. So things could change in the future, but this is the way I think we're going to approach it. First, we're going to be introducing you to the idea of conditionals. So far, we have all these different variables, but now we want to make choices based on the values of those variables. Next, I'm going to introduce you to a new operator. It's very much like conditionals. It's called the ternary operator, and it's really useful. Then you'll be introduced to things called switch statements. And switch statements is, in a way, another type of conditional, another type of if statement. And then I'll introduce you to enumerations and constants. I could have introduced you to enumerations and constants in the previous section, but once you see how they work in context of control flow, you'll understand why they're so important. Then we dive into loops. You'll be introduced first to the for loop. This is the basic loop that we use to iterate through things like collections or even our own counters. Then you'll be introduced to the for each loop. The for each loop is great when working with collections, specifically arrays. Then finally, we're going to close out this section by talking about while loops and do while loops. There's a lot to dig into. But here's the thing. If you're a little shaky on the things that we covered in the previous section, then I highly suggest you re-review all those videos and make sure you have a firm foundation before you move into the next section. It's hard to believe, but once you complete the next section, believe it or not, you'll have the basic materials to start making your game. Now, the game itself would be very unflexible and somewhat unwieldy from a code perspective, 
but you could actually work with it. So there's a lot of exciting things coming down the pipe. Well, I hope you've been enjoying this video series so far. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, please make sure to leave a message in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you in the next episode. See you then.